Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and today we're going to talk about armor again. But to do so, I have decided to use two of my favorite games ever, which are Oblivion, The Elder Scrolls 4, and Skyrim, The Elder Scrolls 5. Now, these two games, um, in these two games there are a lot of different kinds of armor and armor sets and I thought they might be interesting to um, look at these armor sets and see whether they would have made sense from a historical point of view and also in the meantime see uh, examine each single component of these armor sets and and actually give you my opinion opinion about about it now one thing I would like to say is that the only thing I will compare the, all the different sets but one thing I will not take into consideration will be the graphics the reason being that The Elder Scrolls Oblivion uh, was released in 1994 and The Elder Scrolls Skyrim was released in 2011. So obviously the amount of texture and the graphic quality is completely different. However, the sets still make sense. I'll try to, to, to describe the sets and the pros and cons of each set from a historical point of view as if they were real sets of armour. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first one I would like to talk about is fur armour. This is an example of fur armour from Oblivion. Now would this armor actually have made sense from a historical point of view? Yes it would. The reason being is that it actually looks like some kind of gambeson or reinforced Akaton. That's what it looks like. And so some kind of padded armor and would people actually have you been using these? Yes, of course they would have. Also, because you have to consider that particularly in the Dark Ages, for example, um, not everyone could afford uh, to buy um, armor, like male armor, even if that was the most c common kind of armor. So people could not buy metal armor, would have actually worn to battle the thickest kind of clothing that they could have. So even if the idea of this specific kind of uh, armor as an Akaton could be debatable, um, the fact of the idea of going into battle wearing the thickest kind of clothing you have and reinforcing a little bit the shoulders would have made sense. Now, uh, looking at the armor, I like, as I said, the way they reinforce the shoulder part. And But one thing I don't... I, I like the fact that the, they have some kind of um, leather, or at least it's not leather, but fur um, clothing uh, to protect... Like, like some kind of cuisse to protect the legs. I like that. But I don't like the fact that the... Um, that has, there is no kind of gauntlet, nothing to protect the hands, which is a very exposed area. So that wouldn't have made much sense, considering that all the effort that this person might have, might, the person creating this armor, would have, would have put into into reinforcing all the other parts that we see darker, like the lining. Um, the helmet itself, I don't particularly like. I don't like the looks of it. It looks some, like some kind of cap, um, probably leather cap or some kind of protection. Um, so. Overall, not too bad. So let's move to the Skyrim part. Now, in Skyrim, in this case, I have to say that I kind of prefer the way it looks in uh, in Oblivion because in Skyrim it does not look like a gambeson anymore, but it actually looks like any kind of clothing that you found, you just put on yourself and get got ready to battle. I do like the kind of wild um, look that it has with all the fur on the shoulders, particularly on the right shoulder. And... I don't mind the fact that it has some kind of proper greaves. But again, there is still the problem of no gauntlets. And in this case, actually, I don't see any kind of helmet. I don't think this armor, this armor, actually, this armor set actually had um, a, a helmet. So overall, I think that the Oblivion version of fur armor looks better and makes more sense, apart from the actual greaves that we have here to protect the shin, which look kind of realistic and legit. Moving on to leather armor. Now here we are back in Oblivion and the leather armor in Oblivion actually looks quite nice. Um, I like the fact that it's reinforced on the knees and the shoulders as well. He's got some kind of leather pauldron that protects the shoulder. But one thing I don't particularly like is the fact that it does not have much protection from the, for the neck. Also considering that the kind of helmet that he has, which looks like some kind of, maybe some kind of bassinet made of leather kind of um, r leaves the face completely unprotected and he does not have any kind of gorget now the hands now do have some kind of protection of gauntlets so that that's nice and I think that the whole cuirass part I like the fact that it's it's all stitched together and makes it look kind of um, a little bit perhaps broad um, not too refined but still pretty nice. The, there is a little kind of fold to protect the hips and the lower part, the higher part of the of the knees and also all the the legs are protected so I, I like this kind of armor I think it's quite nice. 
Now, moving on to the leather armor in Skyrim. Now, here the situation got a lot better. I think that the um, leather armor that we have here is a lot better than the one in uh, in uh, Oblivion for two reasons. But first of all, um, I like the fact that the pauldrons have got a double layer protection, which is nice because the spol the the shoulders is one of the areas that would be would have been would have received a lot of attacks uh, from the enemy blows. So they do need to be reinforced. And also there is some kind of little asymmetry here. They are asymmetrical because the one on the left side has got a little bit of more like a higher protection like a, a lame uh, which protects a bit more and that makes sense because all medieval kind of uh, pauldrons uh, particular but not all but particularly the ones made in Italian style uh, the metal ones most of the times so they would be asymmetrical and the left one would be the thicker one and the bigger one the biggest because um, normally when you fight you your your left side of the body is um, facing your opponent so this makes a bit more sense from a historical point of view um he has got a bit less protection in the knees as you see as we've lost the protection in the knees and the, and the protection in the hands so these two things are negative points but i like how the area on the belly has got again a double layer protection with some kind of plate i think and also the um the neck is a bit more protected and the helmet does look more like a helmet because it, it also protects uh, and covers quite a bit of his neck. The only problem here, I think, is he would have would have a lot of protection for other problems with his earring. So I don't think his earring would have been very nice. But he has got some nasal protection. He's got some protection on the on the nose. So the helmet actually looks like some kind of Norman helmet with a bit more protection on the sides. So between the two, I have to say that I prefer the one in Skyrim. Now moving on to iron. Armor. So this is the iron armor, the first metal kind of armor, metal based armor in Oblivion. Now this armor looks pretty standard and pretty nice. Um, I don't like the, spol the, the, the pauldrons much because I think that they are too small. Um, and also the, there is no asymmetry, although that do ma does make sense because for example in the German style there is no asymmetry, but the pauldrons are pretty big. So, uh, But it does have a little bit of double protection if you look, because the upper cannon protecting the arm is also overlapping with the pauldron so I like that the cuirass is pretty nice it's got a little bit of a fold um, with well the, it doesn't have fold it's got tacits directly attached to the cuirass that's not very historical it's very strange to see tac tacits attached to the cuirass without at least a couple of of lames of fold um, of, of fold but still, it kind of makes sense from a protection point of view. The area of the groin, though, from my point of view, is a bit too exposed, and he should have been wearing some kind of male underneath that. At least male skirt, if he it, if it didn't have, in the Italian fashion, if he did not have any kind of arm in doublet. Which he does seem to have, but without any kind of male. So, not very effective. The quiz is nice, the knees are well protected, and I like the... Um, the the greaves he has got, but he has he has no uh, sabatons, so his feet are very exposed, and and so even if the hands are quite protected with the lower cannons and uh, a proper gauntlet, I have to say that this armor mm, it's not very effective, and also because I don't like the fact that he does not have a gorget, so it, it seems like some kind of um, clothing to protect his throat, and the helmet looks pretty small. It's like a very very small helmet. Again, some kind of va bassinet, but with no visor. So the overall efficacy, the overall uh, armor, um, I like the cuirass, but it does need a lot of improvement. Now, iron armor in Skyrim is kind of the symbol of the game. Now, I do know that this is the basic version. There is also a version with pauldrons so i will not say anything about the fact that there is no pauldrons in this one here i'll just talk about this the all the um, segments now this armor looks uh, okay the arms are completely exposed so no upper cannon looks too cheap and although the helmet looks really nice uh, and nasty um still uh, and so the helmet is a good improvement from con comparing it with the oblivion version the um and the and the, you know the the whole uh, arms the, the arms are too uh, too exposed and and there is no protection there so i wouldn't really like that it looks good because it shows his guns it shows his his arms and muscles and biceps uh, but still wouldn't really make, make much sense uh, the gauntlets are pretty nice because they're protecting all the way for the uh, up the forearm and the greaves 
look really solid, but the fold is kind of strange. I mean, there, there are no metal plates in the front, no metal plates in the back, and the belly is completely exposed. So, sorry Skyrim, but Oblivion got this one. I think their armor, their iron armor, makes a lot more sense. So, even if the cuirass looks pretty good, I don't like the fact that, there, again, as I say, there is no protection in the belly, no lower protection, and the Good, and even though the gorget part, it, although it's missing, it does protect up to the top, it's, it still looks too much, um, it doesn't look very effective, so I don't like this kind of armour. Moving on to steel armour, now this is where things are starting to get serious here. Now, Oblivion, steel armour, one of my favourites in the game, I think it's like my favourite armour in the game, Oblivion, um, although it's not really effective in, in the game characteristics, but it's very, very nice. Now, it looks very Italian um, because uh, we have a nice fold, although again, we have the same problem. He has got just clothing underneath and the growing area is too exposed, so that, that make, doesn't make sense. Italians would have used ma a male skirt there to protect. Uh, however, the cuirass, which is, as you see, it's made of two pieces, the upper piece and the lower piece, and they are united by a central um, leather strap. Now, that makes sense because it gives a lot more mobility. It's a lot easier to move your torso. And so that would have made it and also gives you double layer protection in the very core, in the very center of, of your body. So that's very, very nice and very accurate. The, we have asymmetrical pauldrons with the left one being bigger, as I said. So this makes sense. And again, in the Italian fashion. And we have got proper cuis and nice knee protection, sabatons, complete sabatons, complete um, protection of the shin with the greaves. So this armor makes sense and the gauntlet there is not really a normal gauntlet It's a mitten and also that makes sense because um, You know for an iron armor a mitten would have been a bit too futuristic But for this kind of armor, which is a suit of armor a mittens would have been developed And I think that this makes sense. The only thing that doesn't really make sense is the helmet and so sorry about that I know it looks good, but still this is some, some kind of uh, barbute, that's what it is and I think that you know, putting all the effort to cover your, your, all, your every bit of body, then why leaving the face exposed? I know you will get good vision out of it, but I think it would make sense if this helmet had some kind of visor that could have been hinged up to, 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 to have good vision and then closed up during actual battle. So the only negative point of this armor are the groin area and the helmet. All right, steel armor in Skyrim. Steel armor in Skyrim is pretty much an upgraded version of the iron armor. And the helmet looks very nice and very imposing. So it kind of looks Nordic, um, Norse. So, yeah, okay, I understand. But again, here, it's a full armor. I think I would have had some kind of visor there. But it's not as evident as in the Oblivion version because the whole armor doesn't really look like a suit of armor. It looks kind of strange I have to say because the uh, greaves and, and and gauntlets make sense but I don't like the fact that the gauntlets don't protect the, the fingers which are the most the easiest one to get break, broken during battle so the gauntlets don't make sense at all the pauldrons are very nice and I like the fact that they are in two sections so that that would have meant overlapping of metal and lames so very good protection for the spold, for the pauldrons and the cuirass looks good and the good thing about the cuirass here is that it reaches up and it has a a gorget which is historical sometimes some gorgets actually were part of the of the cuirass and others would have been added uh, but this one makes sense good protection and also look at how it gets thinner towards the hips now that's very historical because very good kinds of cuirass would have been like that. They would have been made exactly for you and for your body. And an armor like that, a cuirass like that, resting on your hips would have been a lot lighter to carry. So that makes sense. Again, the fold part uh, kind of strains there, but I like the double protection for the belly. So again, between the two, I have to say that even though this is a Pretty nice armor considering the queer the queer ass part and the pauldrons. I prefer again oblivion steel armor. Now talking about steel armor in Skyrim, we have another kind of armor based on 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 steel, which is called in the game plate armor, steel plate armor. Now this armor here was one of my favorite armor sets when I was playing. When I managed to smith it, I was very very happy. So I'd like to talk about this one as well. So this one here is a lot better compared to the other steel armor that we have in Skyrim, and I really like the fact that the cuirass looks very nice. It's got complete protection. It's got very good 
pauldrons. Although they are too much detached to the side, I think I would have put them a little bit higher up. Um, but the upper um, cannon and the lower cannon with the gauntlets is perfect. Um, one thing I don't like is how the inside of the arms looks quite unprotected. I would have put some kind of mail there, there, but that's just my own opinion. Now the coins and the legs are very, very well protected. So I think, and the helmet again. The helmet is interesting because uh, it looks like a closed helmet, but I don't think it can hinge up and f by looking at it. So I think it would qualify like some kind of great helm. So apart from the great helm there, but which looks good, I know, I know it looks good, but it's it's a lot better than the other steel armor that we have in Skyrim. But personally, I still prefer the steel armor we have in Oblivion, simply because it looks more historical. Right now. Elven Armor in Oblivion. Now, Elven Armor in Oblivion, I remember that when I was playing, I was really looking forward to have it because I liked the colour. But when I got it, I thought to myself, uh, probably not. Now, the problem here is the helmet. Now, what is that? Now, honestly, it looks like some kind of mistaken mistake. It looks like a mistaken burgonet, perhaps. I don't know. I mean, it's completely... Um, exposed, again, the neck, the face, there is no visor, and those horns on the top, they look too thick to be decorations, so those are made of the same metal that made the whole helmet, so I think that that would have been a lot of problem and a lot of extra weight that could have been, you know, if you really wanted to put some kind of knob or some kind of decoration there, you could have used some other kind of um, materials, I think, and also two there, they just don't look Good. Now, the Kuriras is where this gets um, mental, because it looks like it's made of curved bands, like some kind of uh, metal stripes. However, the way they are put, it's kind of strange because they can't overlap. It, I mean, it looks like they are kind of randomly placed in there, and, and, and also the whole neck there is no protection whatsoever, so you can slit his throat, even if you were like 11 years old, I think. The arms are almost unprotected on the top part. So I know this is supposed to be a light armor, but it's metal, so it's, unless you, you, you think of it as a fantasy, so it's very some kind of light metal. But if it is light metal, then why not protecting the whole thing? I mean, it doesn't really make much sense, even if you think about it from, an, from a fantasy point of view. The sabatons don't look good at all. And he does have some kind of um, hauberk, I think, male hauberk underneath it, which actually would make absolutely no sense, considering this is some kind of light armour. It would actually be heavy, considering all the pieces. So this armour, sorry, but makes absolutely no historical sense. Elven armour in Skyrim, that this, things are get, getting serious. This is a really good looking set. I really like how the gorget is very high and very strong and also how it goes uh, kind of forward and I think that that would be pretty good to deflect attacks. The cuirass looks very solid and I like again the fact that it's kind of uh, it's thinner towards the hips. It's got a lot of um, it's a really huge fold with a lot of lames and interesting tacits and then some kind of scale protection underneath it so that looks very nice actually and the, the you know the cannons uh, are complete he's got complete protection the pauldrons are reasonable with double layered protection so this armor is proper proper naughty now, I really like the uh, the legs as well. He doesn't seem to have quiz, but his tassets are covering. And the protection in, uh, on the for the greaves and sabatons is fantastic. I also like the, the looks. So the helmet, again, it's not closed, and he doesn't have protection in the face. Um, so I would have closed a bit the face there, probably. But again, apart from that, I think it looks pretty, pretty reasonable. So, I would definitely say that Skyrim gets this one. Now, Oblivion's glass armour. Yeah, I know. Glass. Well, what can you do? Fantasy. Now, things here, are, I think, are getting out of end. Uh, I mean, look at you. You're despicable. I mean, this is very strange. And the funny thing is that the Kuiras and Pauldrons wouldn't be too bad another time when I used to play this. Um, I really like the colour because it looks different. However, I mean, the helmet, what happened? What's that? 
It makes absolutely... I mean, it looks like the shape of a Japanese kabuto, but he has got like a, a big metal piece in front of his face. And no, I don't think that that makes much sense as a helmet. And I absolutely don't like the looks. Um, the gauntlet and folds with with all the small tassets is okay and he has got again male armor underneath i don't know why but in believing they have this idea that light armor needs to have male i think they should try and put on a, a male a hauberk and then we'll see if they still think it's it's light armor um again the uh, just like in an armor before we, we have seen that they have got no sabatons so sorry that's enough that's it triggered this armor makes no sense it's rubbish glass armor in skyrim or at least in Oblivion it did look like some kind of glass stolen from a church. This does not, does not really give much the idea of glass. It, it looks more like a, an armour made of, made of emerald or some other kind of gems. It looks good. I like the looks. They have improved on that. He's got very good protection for the neck. Fantastic layered uh, kuriras, which looks some kind of mu like a muscular kuriras, more like the Greek style or the Roman style. The, um, the folds are protecting... All the upper leg, so I think he's got no quiz. And the um, I really like the gauntlet and the and the whole double protection. Like the, as you as you can see, like these pauldrons, the pauldrons have kind of two pieces, uh, the top piece and the lower piece, which kind of protects also the upper part of the of the arm. So this armor makes a lot more sense. So definitely, I think that in a, in Skyrim, glass armor has improved a lot and makes a lot more sense. The helmet looks like some kind of a, another kind of barbute, I think. So again, I would have used closed helmet, but I'll just st stop saying that. Every time you see a helmet that is not closed, you know that what I mean. You can read my mind. I will not say it again. Oblivion's Orcish armor. Well, this one looks interesting. It looks like some kind of a mixture between a brigand inn, some kind of leather protection, and a Viking helmet. So it does give a good idea of a like a strong warrior, and I like the fact that he has got all the legs protected. So that's definitely a plus. The arms, sorry, but you lost me there. I mean, look at all the effort the smith put into the protection, the creation of the fold with all the different little things there that actually don't really make much sense because they're not overlapping. So actually, thinking about it again, I don't like the fold. And though it looks like some kind of brigand in, they should have been overlapping. Without overlapping, these would just be like decorations. So this is closer to the Hollywood style. And the only good thing about it is the helmet and the pauldrons. The hands are completely unprotected. This is getting ridiculous. Let's just move to the Skyrim version. Seems like orcs are finally starting to understand how to make armor. That's good for them, I suppose. Well, this orcish armor in Skyrim is a lot better. A lot of overlapping plates. The only problem I see here is that considering all the different plates you have in the Kui Ras, this would weight a lot. But considering an orc needs to wear it and not a human, it could make sense. The pauldrons are very nice. We've got three layers of, no, actually four layers of protection. And it's interesting how underneath all the tassets of the fold, we've got quite a bit of interesting scale um, kuis, which I don't think they were historical, but again, they're nice. Um, I like how he has got even more protection over the uh, stomach. And so the overall armor makes sense. The helmet looks like some kind of very wide Greek helmet with the top, although the top looks like the top was a kind of burger net or closed helmets. But again, the armor is okay. I think that Skyrim got a much better orcish armor. Oblivion's ebony armor. Do what? I mean, l l okay, all, all right then. Now, I'll be fair, I'll be fair. I, 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 I kind of like this armor. I like the, the color because it looks old like old style and so it kind of reminds me of the armor alantica the the ones that would be make in italy um although the helmet is still some kind of like similar to a viking helmet which i don't think it looks good on this armor i like the pauldrons because they're asymmetrical but the helmet really ruins it here the gorget is really really good it's got bands on on the stomach and then a standard standard upper cuirass which Never really happens, I think, in history, but all right. The legs are very well protected, and I like the fact that the quiz is has a lot of overlapping plates. So among all the quiz that we have seen up, up to now, I think this one would be the most effective one. Although the fold 
could need a little work. I think the armor, the overall look of the armor is all right. It's a, it's quite a good looking armor, and I think it would have been quite effective. Ebony armor in Skyrim. Now this is close to perfection. I mean, this was this is my favorite armor set ever out of uh, like all the Elder Scrolls games. Uh, I really I was so happy when I managed to make this because look at it. It's fantastic. I mean, the pauldrons are very nice, very well well distributed. They actually go all the way up to the gorget and he's got a closed helmet thanks gods the gods i think i should say and there are a lot like it again makes sense it's got is very thin in the in the hips he's got proper folds proper um gauntlet i don't think he i don't I, I can't actually see what he's wearing underneath because it looks very black but i think his his arms were pretty protected because the lower um cannon go all the way up until they overlap with the pauldrons so this would have been really really nice very good protection. The quiz have got plates and the and the greaves are very solid with good knee protection. So I think that this is the best and most effective armor of all the armors that we've seen up uh, so far. And it also uh, looks very, very uh, beautiful. I think it's just majestic. Dwarven armor in oblivion. Now this one here, it wouldn't be too bad, but it has got some really serious problems. I like the closed helmet. But I don't like the pauldrons, I think they look too small. And the Kui Ras. Gosh, what happened, dwarfs? Why did you do that? I mean, you have bands, which yes, were used historically, but horizontally, never vertically. Why would you have vertical bands? I mean, horizontal bands, they overlap, and when they move, they kind of go up, they hinge up, so it's easier to move. But this wouldn't really much make, make much sense. I mean, what were you thinking? I mean, I'm sure that you can actually slit easily a blade in between those those bands. So sorry, but this armor makes doesn't make much sense. The only good things are the arms. But no, it's not not my cup of tea, I'm afraid. Right then, finally, seems like the dwarves are getting better. The dwarven armor for Skyrim. Well, the cuirass is looking better, I think. But the pauldron, the pauldrons are all right. Considering, that, yeah, they are a little bit too on the ex exterior, but he's got some heavy shoulder protection on the top of the cuirass with a very thick double layered gorget. So I don't think that that would be much of a problem. The helmet, though, it's a closed helmet, but, which is obviously nice, but it's got too much extra metal at the bottom. And I don't think you actually need that. It would make it quite heavy to carry. Um, the arms and legs are all right, and he has got some good protection. I, I hope he's got um, Kuis there. I mean, I can't see it. I, I suppose he's got some kind of metal over there. Otherwise, this would just be just, just complete rubbish. So let's just pretend he's got Kuis there, and I just can't see it. So out of the two, I would say this is better, but just slightly. Blades, protectors of the Emperor. I mean, this is the special guard of the Emperor, and I appreciate the Roman look, because obviously it's inspired to a Lorica Segmentata. Now, the problem is that if you compare it to real Lorica Segmentata, which I have, and you can see in my channel, um, the, the shoulders area, the plates for the shoulders, there are only two, and they wouldn't make sense at all. I mean, they need to go a little further down, otherwise the arm would be easily attacked. He has got no gorget, no protect. I mean, okay, right, in Roman armor they wouldn't have gorget, but still, it does go up diagonally. This is completely horizontal. So even if you put a scarf, like the Romans did, it would still be very open to attacks. Um, he's got some mail, I think, in, in the arms. I think that that's okay, and he's protected. His hands are protected. The lower part, I don't have much to say about that, but it's still, it kind of looks like some, some kind of cheap Roman armor, maybe type, I mean, not... My type, maybe closer to type B, but still, the helmet is like a Roman helmet, pretty much. Although, well, in between a Greek helmet and a Roman helmet, considering that the cheek plates are not moving. Overall, mm, meh. Now, blade armor in Skyrim, it's interesting because in Skyrim the Empire looks a lot more Roman, but the blades have become a, li a lot less Roman in their look. It makes sense because there is also in Skyrim the, uh, the imperi Imperial armor, which I will not show here because I can't compare it with anything. But, but anyways, it, it really looks like a Roman armor anyway, so it's like talking about Lorica. Uh, but this here, 
you still have a little bit of the, you know, you can tell that it's a, it belongs to the blades because of the shoulder part, which is getting better because you've got a few, a few plates overlapping. And the helmet is less Roman, a bit more general, perhaps. Um, the, the rest of the armor is okay, and the cuirass still has this kind of stripes. It looks like a muscolata, I think. So, kind of Roman, kind of Greek. So, between the two, as an armor, I prefer this one because he's got more protection. So, Skyrim gets it again, for, as far as I'm concerned. Last but not least, Daedra armor. Now, this is the one in Oblivion. I have to say, it looks powerful, I'll give you that. But the problem here is, I think, uh, this, the, the pauldrons look a bit of a bit more design. I don't really like it, but again, it was made by demons, I suppose. So, I don't think they really care about the looks. Um, the helmet is very imposing. It's a closed helmet, obviously. So, that looks kind of um, like 12th century, 11th century, perhaps. Um, and But the whole thing is a suit of armor. So, that's kind of strange from a historical point of view, but still, it looks good. And I like the fact that it's got all these little, small, thin decorations that do add a little bit of they're, they're very dehumanizing and the kuras looks pretty solid um although i think it's all in one piece and you know, very elaborate decorations and the folds make sense the quiz and and everything has got sabatons this is a full set of armor it makes sense i think it's pretty reasonable from an historical point of view although although i think it would have been quite heavy dedra armor in skyrim looking sharp today mate I mean, this armor looks really, really good. I, I have it in my second character, the who is obviously, obviously the evil character, because I always have a good character and an evil character. Now, the I like the these asymmetrical pauldrons with the one on the left with the higher horn, so they did a really good job there. These demons have got better at making armor, but the helmet is open, and I know that you can't see the face because of all the black magic, whatever, but. Uh, I think that that's a bit of a shame, considering that the whole armor has got a lot, very high degree of protection. The cuirass is definitely looking better because it still has a lot of decorations, but it's, it looks more like more less of a parade cuirass and more of a battle cuirass. The legs again and arms are very well protected. So considering, even though the helmet is not very nice, I like the part with the gorget. And considering the double layer protection for the pauldrons, the asymmetrical pauldrons, I would say that this armor makes more sense. So again, from my point of view, it's a victory for Skyrim. Alright then, it's quite a long video. Well, you managed to watch until the end, so let me tell you, you are hardcore. Let me commend you for that. Well, thank you very much for your time. Um, among the two games, I think that Skyrim has got the highest number of better looking armors and um, most like the armors that look most reasonable from an historical point of view. But also Oblivion has some nice sets and I commend the art directors for what they have done from an artistic point of view. Alright then, so please let me know in the comments below which one is your favourite set. And thank you very much for watching and remember the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.